Today we are talking about the new HD0 Freestyle VTX version 2. That is the model that will go up to 1 watt of RF power. Now I already have a review of that VTX coming on the channel and there will be a link to that in the description. This though is a separate video covering the thermals as well as a complete teardown of the VTX as well as taking a closer look at the images that I have also uploaded onto repair.wiki and explaining the layout of the boards and just giving you a bit more of a technical deep dive. Now, if you find this video interesting, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider also checking out the link to Patreon in the description. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at the thermal behavior of this new VTX first of all. Now, for those who don't know, the new version 2 VTX has an entirely new design. Instead of it being a single board, large flat design, the new one is a dual board, very similar to the likes of the DJI 03 system or the original Cadex Vista. Whereas before you had a single board sandwiched between the heatsink on either side. Now we have two boards sandwiched between a heatsink on the top and bottom, as well as a large aluminium slug or heatsink piece in the middle. This is obviously going to have an effect on the VTX thermally and that's what we're going to take a look at next. Okay, so the VTX has been on about 10 seconds here and you can see that it's the middle section that is getting hot first. Now remember we just said that this VTX is two PCBs sandwiched between a top and a bottom plate and then we have that heatsink part in the middle and that is what is getting the hottest first. Now, obviously, it will take time for the heat to propagate throughout the VTX. And again, here you can see that the thermal camera is showing a good temperature difference between the top and the bottom compared to the middle. And it is this middle area that you're going to want to make sure is getting cooling. Just popping the top or the bottom of this VTX into airflow is not going to be enough. If you look here, we flipped it over. You can see on the bottom, there is no major center point that is getting very hot. It is that middle bit and you're going to want airflow around the whole of the outside of the sides of this VTX. So depending on how you're going to integrate this into your aircraft, whether that be quad or fixed wing, you want to make sure that middle area is getting cooled. Now, if we look at the temperatures here, you can see it isn't dramatic differences and you shouldn't take these thermal numbers as absolute fact. There may be variances, but you can see that the difference between the middle and the top and bottom isn't like 20 degrees. It's more like four or five degrees, but that does show quite a big difference from a thermal point of view on the camera. Now, in my tests, this VTX absolutely gets as hot as the original ones. It's just that it behaves different thermally, as you can see. Different parts of it get hot. On that original VTX, you had the power amps against the bottom or the top plate, whereas now they appear to be against something in the middle. And we'll take a closer look at that when we do the tear down in a minute. But you can see from the thermal image in the areas that you're going to want to concentrate on building it into your frame. Now, just to show it after a period of time, you can see now we have temperatures up to 80 degrees plus. Again, that middle bit is the hottest, but you're still getting very high temps on the outside as well. You can see those grooves in the heat sink are helping. They are dissipating heat, but these VTXs cannot run without airflow. So you're going to need to make sure, regardless of what type of aircraft you're putting it into, there is air moving around it and it does need space around the sides as well. It's not going to be happy just popping out the top of something. You're going to need to make sure that there's good flow all around. Now, as you've seen from the thermals, it's clear that most of the heat is being driven into that middle area initially, and then it spreads out from there. It is easy to think that this VTX doesn't get as hot as the original one, but that's not actually the case. It's simply that most of the heat is in that middle area. So if you are holding the VTX or touch testing it, you may feel that it's colder, but that's because most of the heat is in that middle section. The top and bottom covers are definitely helping. They're certainly not doing nothing. However, 
However, it looks like most of it is in that middle bit. So what we're going to do next is tear the VTX down and try to understand why that is the case. So I've removed the four screws and we're going to lift the lid. Now I have done this very quickly once just to have a look. There isn't a huge amount of thermal compound under here. You can see there is a little bit there just going on to a component there. Not sure what that is. We'll take a closer look at it in a minute. Now this side is the sort of RF power board is the best way to describe it. We have under here our two Skyworks power amplifiers. You can see them coming out into our antenna UFL. There's some circuitry here. I suspect that's voltage regulation. That looks like a coil. What I suspect is we've got a voltage regulator here for the two power amps and there's some thermal compound on the. Now you may be wondering, well, why is there no thermal compound on those PAs? Well, the way this is set up is it will be driving the heat from them through the other side of the PCB because under these PAs, there is usually big copper flat areas and that will be going into the middle section of this part of the heatsink and that's actually why when you look at it under the thermal camera as I've just done you're seeing the heat going in there it's not pushing it out the top it's pushing it down and that will largely be simply because of the additional clearance you've got in here compared to the clearance that you've got underneath now what is actually interesting is this little thing here you can see there's actually a tiny I'm not sure UFL is the right term for whatever this one is, but you can see that's going through on a cable underneath. It's actually held down in place with a little bit of glue, and I suspect that is going between the two PCBs. That is what's bringing the RF up from the bottom PCB into the top one, and then that's going through the main PAs and out the other side. But I have to say, everything under here looks really, really nice. The board quality looks a big step up actually from what HD0 has been doing before. It's really good to see everything looks tidy. And again, let's keep going. Now, just taking the bottom off before we try and have a look in the middle, you can see here again, we've got some thermal paste that goes between that IC and the bottom cover. I suspect that's the main Divi Math IC. I am going to actually clear all this up to do some pictures for repair.wiki because people will be asking for them. Um, I haven't looked at that yet. I'll be ending up having to replace that thermal compound, but I suspect that's the main Divi Math chipset, the one that does generate a bit of heat in the other one. And again, they've placed it down the bottom there, and that's what's then cooling via the bottom cover. Now, just before we take it apart further, I just wanted to talk about the interesting stage that I'm at here because this very much reminds me of what people have been doing with the DJI O3E unit with the light and the ultra. We've removed obviously the top and bottom covers and I can absolutely see some people wanting to try this in open air. Now, I don't think Carl is going to recommend that for one minute. It's not going to be something he suggests you do at all. And obviously it will kill any warranty that you may have. However, that does take the size down and it's going to take the weight down as well. Let me just grab my scales just to see what that gets down to. Now, if you remember earlier, we were roughly 23 grams. If we put all of the pieces back on, yeah, you can see we're at 23. And if we lift those two off, you can see on its own 15 grams. Yeah, 14, 15 grams. I've seen it hover between the two. So I can definitely see that being something people are interested in trying. But obviously, it may come with the potential risk of failure. Now, to get this down to the next layer, we need to be careful. If we have a look on the side there, we can see that there is a coil. I think there, I can actually see the other part of that coax that's coming through there. I think it's going down there and over to there. And if we flip it over this side, you can see that there's a connector there that goes between the boards. You can see the pins running all the way down there. So that is what's going to be providing the power and the communications with the RF going up through that part over there. So what I'm going to do now is very carefully try to separate this board. Let's see if we do it on camera and try not to destroy it. Open it up very gently. There we go. We've removed the pins and now there's a lot more heat in this 
side and that isn't surprising because what we've then got there there you go you can see in there you've got that massive copper area that is sandwiched up against that middle plate of the heat sink that's where we're seeing all of the heat that's all the heat from the power amplifiers being pushed through into that center area and then there's also some compound there on another chip too most likely another voltage regulator and then if i flip it out down this side very carefully there we go you can now see that coax and that other Divi Math chipset over there, as well as our MIPI interface IC. That's that one there. Some more voltage regulation and input there with our crystal. Overall, I have to say, the design of this board is really, really nice. Now, just to walk you through the PCBs in a bit more detail, the one you're seeing here is the bottom board of the two. We could call this the CPU or video board because this handles the camera input and it has the DiviMath chipset on board as well. Now, the bit you're seeing here is the top of the bottom board. This is what meets that heat sink that is in the middle on the VTX. We've got the DiviMath MUX chipset. This is their RF chipset, the DM6300. You can see there that comes out to a little RF filter and heads down to that little connector like that small UFL that heads off then to the second board. So what you've got is the video input and processing on the bottom board. Then that heads out to the top board as base RF and that gets amplified out with the VTX. Also on this board, we have our MIPI interface IC. That is this one here. That is what's taking that MIPI input from the camera and putting that into the DiviMath chipset. And then we've got some additional chipsets over here. I'm not exactly sure what they are. I suspect they're either IO chips for communication, maybe voltage regulation, but there's no coils there. So I suspect there's some form of IO for the communications, maybe on the UART and things like that. On this side of the board, the only other thing we have is an oscillator, which is 27 megs. And you can see overall that there's plenty of space on this side of the board. It's not particularly cramped at all. We've just then got a little LED over here. If we go to the bottom of this board, this is what meets the bottom heatsink on the VTX. You can see we've got our main DiviMath chipset. So this is the DM5680T. We've then got our camera interface input over here. That's our MIPI input. So you've got your camera coming in to this MIPI interface, going into the MIPI chipset, and then that is being fed into the DiviMath chipset. That then is being fed into the second DiviMath chipset. This is creating the RF baseband and then pushing it out over coax. Down here, there really, again, isn't a lot to see. We've got our firmware update port, which comes straight into our DiviMath chipset. We've just got our header that heads off to the second board. And more than anything, just some sundry components. We've got a diode down here. And there's also a little smiley face here that they've added onto the design as well. Next, moving up to the bottom of the top PCB. Now, this is what meets the center heatsink from the top. Now, you can see we have a large copper-filled area here. This is the bit that is actually moving most of the heat away from the power amplifiers, which are on the other side of the PCB, and into that heatsink. And this is why you're seeing most of the heat coming that middle area, first of all, because the top of the heatsink doesn't actually touch the power amplifiers amplifiers on the other side. I'll show you that in a set again in a minute. It instead moves the heat through the PCB. There's vias here, there's vias here, and then it's moving that into that middle area of the heatsink. You can see it is a big copper fill area, and that actually has thermal paste on it, as you saw in the teardown, that then transfers the heat across to the aluminium. We then up here have a large voltage regulator. This again is touching the heatsink. We've got our coil up here, got some capacitance as well as another coil here. And then over here, we've got some additional ICs. I'm not exactly sure what these are. I have done a search and I couldn't find much info on them. There's a pair of ICs here which are identical, which is quite interesting, but they're in an opposite configuration. They almost look like a pair of FETs actually, but I don't think think they are but I could be wrong and then we've got another IC here and another IC here overall though this side of the board 
mostly is power regulation. We've got our connector input here for our main power, as well as our serial input. They could be some form of serial communication ICs. I'm going to do a bit more digging to see what I can find out. But overall, I don't believe they're anything particularly important with regards to an RF side of things, other than the fact that they may be providing power. If we then move to the top of the top PCB, you can see we've got our two power amplifiers. We've got a voltage regulator here with another coil, some capacitance, diodes, and this is the side of the board that brings in the power. We have our TXRX for our UART, but it also has our RF as well. And you can see here is that little RF input that comes from the bottom PCB. And if you actually look, it's quite easy to see the RF track. What you've got is the RF comes up, from that chip on the bottom board. It goes down through this matching circuit down here. That will then come through the gap into this filter here. And then that goes off into our power amplifiers. And what you will have is basically like a balanced setup. I believe this setup is called a push-pull amplifier. What you do is actually split the RF across both PAs and it outputs both of them and then they combine. And then if you look down, that comes down here, out of our PAs here to here, out of this one and then down into our UFL. Now, the PAs that are being used are 66288. These are Skyworks PAs. You can tell that from the logo there. Very similar to what they did before. And then on the rest of this board, you simply have your connector over there, which is that input for the uh, control board, that little one. And really, more than anything, we've just got some sundry components. This regulator here is probably 5 volts. I haven't checked it, but I believe it's usually 5 volts off the top of my head. Very similar to the regulator you see on the other VTXs. This is the one that is a little bit sensitive on voltage input. You need to be a bit careful. What's also interesting is if we look here, we do actually have some pads. So here there seems to be a voltage input and ground pad. Then you also have some pads over here as well, most likely manual inputs for the UART. So it does look like you could hardwire this VTX if you were to damage the port, although that obviously wouldn't be for the faint-hearted, and it would depend on how much clearance there is here under the heatsink, because there may not be a lot of space there to get some wires through. Now, just for quickly anyone wondering what I'm doing on the reassembly, we're using Arctic MX6 because it's the thermal paste that I've got in stock. It's a little bit thicker than the stock stuff, but it'll be absolutely fine. You can see here that we're putting it exactly back where it was before, this large flat area here, which is the heat pad coming through from the power amplifiers onto that there is gonna have it. I'm just gonna tidy that up. And then we've got some blobs there on the voltage regulators and what looks to be some preamps. And then that's going to go through and they're going to sandwich it all up and clean it up. And then we'll put some more wherever it was before to make sure it's absolutely spot on. As you're putting it together, you just want to make sure that you are careful with that coax connector and you do get it refitted. That's all done now. So it's simply a case of me getting the lid back on and then tidying everything up. Okay, so just to share with you my thoughts on the thermals as well as the internal design. Thermally, you can see it's definitely getting very hot. In my opinion, as hot as the original VTX. It's just that the thermal behavior is different as a result of the design. You're now having the PAs back off to that aluminium slug in the middle rather than the sides. And as such, touching the VTX externally may feel cooler. However, the heat is just being pushed into that middle area. I don't believe that's going to cause any problems like the original VTX. You're going to want to make sure it's got plenty of cooling. Overall, though, I think they've done a good job on the design of it thermally. It is going to be interesting, though, to see what people do with regards to running it naked. You're going to have to be careful. Certainly, it is going to have an effect if that VTX overheats quickly. What you could do, though, is have a design where you have some form of heat sink in the middle between the boards and not one on either side, and that's still going to save you plenty of weight compared to having that top and bottom cover as you may have seen in my review video and as we looked at on the teardown. Now with regards to the internals, the PCB design and quality, everything does seem just a little bit 
better than we've seen before. The design of the two board layouts seems pretty good. There is obviously connectors that run between the two. You've got the IO connector as well as that coax. You're always going to have to have things like that. There's nothing there of concern for me. Obviously, if those boards weren't sandwiched together with those heat sinks, you're going to have to be careful. It's not like a ribbon cable like you've got on 03. And if you are going to run this naked, you are going to need to take that into account. Personally, I think you should always have something between those boards to hold them together, even if you're going to run it naked. That way, you're not going to get any problems. But I don't think there's any cause for concern you with regards to longevity or damage in a crash when that's all screwed up nice and tight. Now, I really hope you have found this video interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts, any questions. Please do put them in the comment section. As I mentioned, I do have a review on this and there will be a link to that in the description as well. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please also do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep doing what we do here, like buying the HD Zero goggles, like uploading to repair.wiki, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.